Look at this guy, sweetheart. So yeah, over here at like Sea Rat Skateboards, I definitely try to focus more on your like creative shapes and kind of what I feel a skateboard should look like. Not so much what like what's popular at the moment or what's selling or anything like that, but more just how I feel feel boards should kind of have like curves in the right places and there's just a lot of stuff that since I'm doing it myself I can kind of be particular about everything and get it exactly the way that I feel and that's what I actually take a lot of pride in when it comes to the whole skateboard building process. Well, the shittiest part of the whole process is pressing the blanks and that just involves very limited time constraints and very sticky glue. And so it usually just turns, at least for me, it turns into a complete clusterfuck that I just absolutely despise doing. But uh, it's necessary to kind of keep everything the way that I want to and keep like the concaves consistent, keep the quality consistent. I can reject anything that's twisted or warped right from the get go. I don't ever like allow it to get past that point. Uh, I just can control everything from start to finish by pressing on myself. And that's kind of where like I start. Another thing, like I absolutely hate drilling out the holes. So I'm lucky enough to have a, uh, a friend that owns a cabinet factory that likes skateboards. And so I trade him skateboards for him allowing me to use his CNC machine to drill out these holes. So you get an board for me, that shit is straight. It's done professionally. Uh, there's no guesswork in the in the wheelbase and all that stuff but that's like another i don't offer a bunch of different wheelbases i offer what i like and you get 15 15 and a half or 14. no in betweens <laughs> and then most of my templates are just i literally just draw kind of half the board on a skateboard cut it out finish it take a cardboard template from that and then flip it over and that's that's how i get a skateboard and then a lot of those templates i'll blend you know, I like the wide point somewhere. I blend the nose and tail together. I, that's where I just get creative and just kind of stare at the skateboards, wait for the shape to really come out. And most of the shapes have gone on numerous revisions to get them to kind of where I feel comfortable with them. And then those I just kind of run with and just produce a bunch of them and just kind of go from there. I don't know, my way of making skateboards is definitely different than your kind of mass produced way. I've always done them in like residential neighborhoods and garages and at like very weird times. So most of my tools are generally like hand tools, I use power tools to cut them out and everything like that. But most of my like actual shaping and routing the edges and all that stuff is all done by like hand tools and planers and sure forms and rasps and whatnot. And I found it helps for me not limiting Doing it the way I do doesn't limit the shapes I can create because I'm not forced to use a set of tools that will only work for certain like radiuses and certain things. So it allows me to kind of be more free with what I, what I can think I can produce, I guess. Sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. Well, then it's literally just, you know, cut, shape, sand on the bag sander and flap sander get them to a decent point, finish sand, throw some stain on the guys, and screen print and clear coat. Someone wanted to kind of get into shaping, what would be your uh, advice as far as like first steps? Uh, seriously, just, just have fun with it. Like there's really, if you're doing it yourself, there's nobody telling you how to do it. There's no, there's no limitations on what you can do shape wise. There's no, there's nothing. You're, it's a blank canvas. You can do whatever, whatever you feel like. So like for me, that's, that's kind of where I take the shaping is that like, I, I really want, I've made enough skateboards now to where I can kind of guide C-Rat into a direction that I want it to be at where like I did custom boards for years on end and I made a lot of boards that I particularly didn't think looked good, but the customers were really happy on them. And so I, I don't, don't judge on any of that stuff. Like it is what it is. But as I've gotten to a point where now I, I sell enough skateboards, I can kind of do what I feel like 
and make boards look the way that I think they should look. And so that's kind of like the beauty of if you're going to go down that like DIY route and, and embrace doing it yourself, you might as well let yourself come through the skateboards and have it kind of be more so just like a reflection of your skating, your personality. Like for me, I like to surf and I like skating curbs. So a lot of my boards are going to have that kind of curvy surf look, a lot of smooth curves, nothing too harsh and sharp. And then I like riding big boards, and little trucks, you know, big boards, little wheels, smashing curbs. So that, that's majority of what I make is in that 10 inch range. Wants to get a C-Rat board, how would they go about it? Uh, look me up on Instagram. That's going to be your easiest way. Just most of the time I have plenty of boards going at kind of every single week. I do a different batch. Uh, just DM me. We can talk from there. Sick. Having money in hand is definitely a big factor. This is the neighborhood friendly router. This doesn't make any noise and I can, I work at really weird hours because I like doing daylight activities and uh, this I can use at two in the morning and I can't use a regular router at two in the morning. That very high pitched squeal is a sure way to piss off your neighbors. It kind of like goes back to your point of like how to doing it in, in the way that's unique to you. Yeah, do whatever works for you. Like my set of tools are definitely not the uh, prescribed way of making skateboards, but it works for me. I'm almost 6,000 skateboards into it. So it definitely gets them done. Sick.